Good morning, everyone. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much. My name's Richard. My name's Mark. And we're from LTP. We're talking about our product range here and a guide to cleaning, sealing, and aftercare for stone and other tiles. And a little bit about our company. We've been going for 30 years um, making LTP. Um, it's made in our production plant in Bristol in southwest England. There's our head office there and one of our warehouses. Obviously the main thing we're talking about is ceiling tiles, but that is only the middle stage of the three stages. And this is the most important message that you must give everyone is it is important to talk more than just sealing. What is very important is beforehand is the cleaning and after, afterwards the maintenance, the aftercare. So we're going to start by talking and giving some demonstrations on our range of cleaners. And there's two issues with cleaning. You're either going to clean a new tile, like that one, before it is put down or after it is put down, or you have been asked to clean a floor that has already been down. So the first type of cleaner, as we say, is Grimex. And Grimex is going to be used for either getting rid of existing dirt or conditioning, getting new surfaces ready before sealing. Normally what you would do is you would dilute this slightly with a little bit of water, um, but I prefer demonstration purposes, I'm just going to pour a little bit straight onto the surface of the stain, um, and then with the water I'm just going to add a little bit, and then using something abrasive like a, an emulsifying pad. The good thing about these emulsifying pads is they are coarse, but they, they won't scratch. So they're, they're designed to be used on natural stone. And you can scrub quite hard with those to get your surfaces nice and clean. And then what, what you would normally do is leave the Grimex on the surface for about 10, 15 minutes so that it works into the capillaries of the stone. It'll grab hold of the sediment that is normally uh, accumulated during the manufacturing process of the stone. Our message basically to any installer is always make sure that it is cleaned properly prior to sealing. And if all you do now is you take a sponge and you rinse the surface of the stone. And that to me is now is a, a, a stone once it's dry, but it will be perfectly suitable for sealing. The dry mix is safe to use on all stones. So that, that's a very important reassuring message to give to, to the customer. It'll clean everything and it is, it is perfectly safe. As I said, stone clean is essentially a Grimex mixture in an aerosol. Why did we put it in an aerosol? Because people don't just use stone on the floor, on floors, they use stone on vertical surfaces and especially on fireplaces. So we have it in a spray Make sure all the ingredients are nicely mixed up inside. Uh, one of the big advantages of this uh, product is if you've got uh, stone on walls, you can see that it leaves a foam, like so. And because it leaves a foam, what, what you essentially do is that, that is staying on the surface. So it's not running down. And as the foam dissolves, um, there's a lot of oxygenation. It basically gets all the dirt and the grime moving um, and releases it from the pores from the surface of the stone. So once this foam has disappeared, that is the point in which you then scrub it. And once you've scrubbed it, that releases all the sediment and the dirt. Or you can use a brush as well if it's a very uh, dim uh, or lame surface. Um, and then get your sponge and just simply rinse it. And we've used this product to get soot stains um, out of natural stone as well, which is very effective at that. Um, it, it also works very well on ref for refurbishing surfaces. We find that the, the foaming action creates a lot of oxygen actually in the cleaning solution itself. 
So as a, a dirt lifter, it, this works uh, quicker and more effectively than the Grimex in its liquid state. The next cleaner in our range of cleaners is Grag Stain Remover. It's used to remove grag stains or cement stains and to do that it needs to be an acid. This is a mild acid solution and this is where you have to be careful with limestone or marble or sun travertine, especially polished surfaces, is that it will also attack those surfaces. So it can be used, sandstone is no problem, slate is no problem, but limestone and marble and polished granite, there is a problem. So you can see, I don't know whether you guys can see what's sort of happening. foaming up. It's foaming up instantly on the surface. So what happens if we leave that for a bit and then we'll... Well, you won't need to, it's, it's mm -hmm. thinking more. You can see even that's only been on a few seconds, it's taken a polish. What happens if, as I say, you have grout stains on a polished surface like this marble? What would you use? You would use power stripper. This is also a, a, a very useful, very popular cleaner. So this is a very good product for removing sealant that a customer may have over applied. This quite often happens on polished material. So if someone is using one of our impregnation sealers, like the MPG, on a polished marble, for instance, and they don't follow the instructions and they don't buff off the excess on the surface, this is very good at removing that type of problem. Um, how it removes residual grout is a lot of grouts these days contain um, polymers. What Power Stripper does is it actually breaks down the polymers uh, that bind the grout particles together and make them flexible. So it's another way of getting rid of residual grout without damaging the surface that you're, 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 you're using the cleaner on. So if, you, if you've got uh, paint spots, uh, over applied sealer, uh, mess from other tradespeople working on the site, it's a good idea to use Power Stripper, strip the whole thing back. What is the difference between Power Stripper and Grimex? When would you use Grimex? When would you use Power Stripper? Just two examples. Yeah. Grimex is very, very good at removing ground in dirt and grime, sediment, um, dirt that accumulates during the manufacturing of the stone. Um, it's also very good at refurbishing, in as much as a lot of the issues that you have with stone that's been down for three or four years is an accumulation of dirt and grime in the pores. So Grimex is very, very good for that. Uh, power Stripper is primarily used if you have been a little bit too generous with the sealer and you have applied too much and the floor looks patchy, and in extreme cases where there is a, a lot more than just dirt on your floor. Solvex, this is used for removing film forming sealers. So if someone has used a, a, a sealer that creates a satin or a gloss finish on the surface of their stone, it, it's, that is a barrier between whatever you spill and the surface of the stone. Sometimes it needs stri stripping off and, and removing. Um, and we have this product here called Solvex, which is like a sort of paste. What it's doing is it's, it's eating into the layers that are on the surface of the stone from the film forming sealer, and it separates it from the surface. When you come to scrub it with one of these, it actually helps to remove it. So you put the paste on, you put it on with a brush, it separates the layers, you scrub it, and then you just rinse it with water. Solvex will also act as a paint stripper. Yeah. So if people get paint or their paint, maybe on the floor, someone's lifted the floor and there's some paint on some old tiles, or someone's got some paint on some tiles, Solvex will be a paint, will, will work as a paint remover. Uh, spot stain remover is a solution um, made from solvents and natural orange extracts. You pour it onto the stain and you allow the solution to absorb into the stain. And what happens is it, it gets drawn into the capillaries, it grabs hold of the oil stain and then 
then through the capillaries, it brings the oil to the surface of the stone. And you can actually see it happening. If you were to pour this on and then go and inspect it, uh, about an hour later, you'd see tiny little blobs of oil actually sitting on the surface of the stone. Now the problem then is how do I then get rid of that oil? Um, if you wipe it, potentially you're making the problem bigger. So what you do is you take this product here, which is full of zerf, this isn't a powder, and, and you just perforate the top, and you spray the powder over the oil stone. And what happens is the powder absorbs the oil away from the surface of the stone. And then you just get a sponge, you hoover up the powder, and, and then you, or you vacuum up the powder, and then you just sponge it with a sponge, and the, the stone is gone. Very good outside, if you, have, if you put stone paving outside, and there's an oil leak on your car, and it goes on to the stone, this will get the oil out of the driveway as well. Once, once you've done this, what we then normally advise customers to do uh, is clean the piece of stone that they've been treating uh, with a little bit of dry mix and then just reseal it. So, um, so any, any form of intensive cleaning uh, will require resealing. Multi-clean again is in a trigger spray and multi-clean is, is used therefore on vertical surfaces if you're cleaning tiles in bathrooms, if you're cleaning tiles in kitchens. What multi-clean does is it cleans all the dirt and all the grime from vertical surfaces. What this does is it actually removes lime scale, but at the same time, as it dries, it leaves a barrier behind it that prevents the reformation of lime scale. So it stops moisture clearing. When you use this two or three times to clean your shower screen, for instance, what you'll find is when you've had a shower, the, the, the screen stops messing up. You don't get moisture. When the moisture hits it, it sort of runs off. Um, and because of that, it actually prevents the lime scale from taking hold as well. So as well as being a very, very good cleaner, it's actually a preventer as well. Moldex's main use is to get rid of mold and stain on grout joints. Where we often find in England where it's always been raining and it's always wet, the, the grout sometimes goes black, so or outside it, it, it can do, you can get the stain on the grout. You, you spray the mold eggs on the grout joint and then you scrub it with a brush and it'll bring the grout back to new again. Suntem în pauza prezentării prietenilor noștri de la LTP, Anglia. Sunt alături de Mark. O să-i pun câteva întrebări. Sunt curios ce răspunsuri în voada. Hello, Mark. Hello. How do you find Romania after one year? Um, we find it very exciting. Um, we think that business here has uh, improved exponentially. I mean, the business that we're getting from Rockstar Construct, we've noticed in the last year, has increased uh, quite substantially. And that can be only, only we think, a reflection on on the amount of business that is going on in Romania at the moment. Uh, it's also, you know, possibly down to the training and, and uh, obviously having more staff here as well. Um, and we find Romania on the whole an emerging market. You know, there, there's a lot more construction going on. Uh, there are a lot, uh, a lot more opportunities for people to start up new businesses and actually make a difference. How do you meet the Rockstar Construct team? Well, it, you might well ask. We, we actually received an email from them um, about five years ago uh, asking if they could sell our products in Romania. And when it first came through, obviously, we were very curious ourselves to find out who these people might be that, that were interested in selling our product in uh -huh. Romania. So we, um, we responded, and then they responded again with an order. And we Whoa. thought, well, okay, this, this must be serious. Um, we would like to know more. So um, myself and my colleague Richard Osborne um, decided that we would like to come and visit Romania and visit uh, uh, Mariana and Sergio and, and just see what, what it was that they were up to. And, and um, we were very well received. We've been coming here sort of for the last five years, a couple of times a year, I would say. Um, and during that time, we've seen the business grow 
and we've seen how much the Romanian market we feel has changed and um, all for the better, I think, so, uh, which is good. Good. About your company, what yeah. are your objectives for this year? Uh, our objective for this year is obviously to continue growing. I mean, fortunately for us, as LTP, uh, we've been going for 30 years, um, and during that 30-year period, we've had, we've managed to maintain growth every year. So uh, it's got to the point now where our growth obviously percentage-wise is, is a bit less than it used to be, um, but it's growth all the same. It's, it's on average between 8 and, and 12 percent year on year. Um, a lot of our growth has actually come from export, so not just to Romania but to other countries in Eastern Europe, um, and that's where we see most of our growth potential now because we're very well known in the UK. Uh, we have um, a lot of stores selling our product. Um, our market there is still expanding and it's still growing for us, but we're always keen to explore other markets as well around the world. So. It's important for you, Romanian store market, for your company? Yes, very important. Yeah, yeah very important for us. Um, and it's very important for us to make sure that our customers here uh, are able to sell the product and understand it properly um, and equally as important the fact that they've identified that there is a need for it. Um, I think there are a lot of incidents where stone is sold in Romania and it's not properly sealed, it's not properly looked after um, and that can obviously lead to people not choosing to use stone again which is not good for the market um, and yeah and, and so it, our part of LTP's sort of message is you know, prevention is better than cure. What is the major difference between the UK and Romanian stone market? Um, I think the UK stone market is very much about refurbishment. I would say the retail market has slowed up a little bit, whereby people are preferring to have porcelains that look like natural stone rather than natural stone, but the commercial market for, for stone is still growing. Um, there's a lot of buildings, very grand, um, uh, uh, quite high profile projects where stone is being specified because it's still regarded of as a, a luxury product or a luxury item. Um, so it, we're, we're increasingly, or we're seeing an increasing amount of stone being specified ornately uh, to dress a building and for interiors as well. Um, in the UK. How are you managing uh, awareness regarding your product? Um, how we manage our awareness is obviously our focus is to uh, provide as much training as we possibly can. So if a, a client is interested in our product we will make a point of, of training them um, and making them making sure that they're aware of what the products can do. As far as sort of advertising goes and, and, and uh, creating brand awareness. Uh, the only way to do that is to obviously is to expand your exposure through either retail outlets or through the number of people using your product and get them talking about it. We use a lot of social media, things like Twitter. Uh, we have uh, people who sign up to our blog. So we're forever sort of uh, providing information to the industry about different types of stone and how they need to be treated. Uh, we do a lot of Facebook as well, um, and a lot of obviously networking. Are the people open to the stone care products? Um, they are open to them, um, and as I've said before, the, the, the main uh, message to people who are looking to invest in having a stone surface, be it a web top, a floor, is obviously getting the right advice at the point of sale. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I think people are very open to using the right products, providing they know why they've got to use them. Why is it so important to use the proper products? I, it's, it's so important because if you've made a large investment in your floor, buying stone, I mean stone should last forever. You know, it is a, a, a sort of investment that people make because they, they want their floors to last, they want their surfaces to last. It's a beautiful material, every stone is different. Um, and if you're not using the right products or the right architecture, that surface, for whatever reason, can 
be compromised, can be damaged. Back in England you have a research center. Yes. What is happening there right now? Um, at the moment our research center, we are, or we have just recently uh, finished development of a brand new uh, range of products that are not only environmentally friendly but um, sustainable as well. Um, and we're, we're looking at uh, developments in different types of packaging as well uh, that are more easy to recycle. So we're going completely green. Um, and the technology and the sort of uh, practices behind developing new products has, has come on uh, exponentially in the last three years. I mean, the, the formulas and, and the way in which these products are applied are so much easier than they used to be. Um, a lot of people, when, you, when they go green, they think, yes, expensive and it doesn't work as well. Uh, we've got to the point now where, yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but they're actually working a lot better. And last and question, what do you love about Romania? Um, I love the people. I love the country. My impression is that it's very up and coming. Um, Bucharest as a city I think is, is emerging um, and it improves every time we come here. Um, they're always doing something, building something somewhere, improving something. So I think it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's a beautiful country. We like coming here. Thank you very much for your answers. The break was finished. Let's get back to work. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're now on to ceiling tiles. The three aims of ceiling. Stain prevention, as you said most important. Surface enhancement, which you said either keep the colour or, or bring out more colour, especially with slate. People like, I like it, I, but I like it when it's just wet. I like that just wet look. And the third one is surface protection. So with these sealers, you're going to get three types of finish. You're either going to get a matte finish, which will leave the tile looking pretty well exactly the same as it was bought in its natural state. Some people will like a bit of enhancement, they'll like the colours brought out. And then finally, for a, if people want a shiny, polished gloss or satin finish, um, one of the best aspects of impregnating sealers is it, it allows the tile to breathe, it can be used outside, it can be used in wet areas and correctly applied, they are very resistant to staining. So the one you will all know about is matte stain. I'm just going to put a little bit on the edge of the stain there, and we'll do this section here. Um, essentially very easy to apply, hardly changes the character of the stain at all. So once it's dry, um, it, it offers what we call subtle enhancement. So with any impregnated sealant, when you're filling the pores of the stone and the, the sealant itself is cured, what you're essentially doing is preventing the amount of, or reducing the amount of light that is then absorbed by the stone. On the other hand, you've got colour intensifier. Colour intensifier, when it's used on uh, darker surfaces, I'm just going to pour a little bit on here. Normally you would, you would put it in a separate container, you can apply this with a brush, you can use one of the sealant applicators if you want to, uh, but I'm just going to seal a small section of So you can see the difference it makes to the stain once it's dry. Stain seal is, works, does the same job as map stone, but it's again sold for fireplaces, small kitchen surfaces, yeah. small vertical surfaces. So you much quicker to apply. You just spray it off, let's say, and I will only do half. So, so MPG sealer uh, has been developed to impregnate and to seal a polished tile without altering the natural mechanical polish of the tile. When you mechanically polish stone, what you're essentially doing is, is tightening the pores. You're making the capillaries near the surface much, much smaller. So applying a sealant that contains what we call a nanopolymer to the surface and then spreading it out nice and evenly. allows you to then let that 
sit on the surface. But while it's sitting on the surface, um, all these tiny little straws that you can't see with the naked eye are drawing the solution into the stone. And what happens after about 20 minutes, so you, you would put this on, uh, you would leave it for about 20 minutes, and while the sealer is still wet on the surface, um, and for demonstration purposes, I'm actually going to do this straight away for you. Um, you would take a, something like a microfiber cloth, uh, which are very good for buffing, um, and you would essentially work the sealant into the surface of the stone. And what we're doing here, this is doing two things. This is working, obviously, the sealer into the stone, and it's removing the excess. The buffing, if you do it hard enough, um, if you were to take your hand and rub your hand with your other hand, it, you could feel a bit of heat. Now the heat that's generated through the buffing of the surface expands the nanopolymer within the micro pore of the polished surface. And essentially what that then does is it, it creates a bridge between the solid particles of stone preventing stain from absorbing into the material. So it's that's how it works, essentially. The next product for sealing is our grout and tile sealer. More used for grout than tiles, but again... Very good for stone mosaic. Very good for stone mosaic, and again, it's the same principle. If you've got tiles on a shower, on a vertical surface, using all that can be quite difficult because of the liquid. <laughs> The tilers, anyone who's actually doing the job really likes using this because again it's it's like matte stone in a in an aerosol can. You spray it on the surface of the wall and it acts like matte stone, but it's particularly good for grout. So using something like the grout and tile protector and spraying it over the surface is actually a more efficient way of getting the sealer into the stone. So if you've got a client who's used this sort of stone on a feature wall, I notice a lot of the sort of engineered stone that is uneven. Uh, when you try and brush that or roller it, it's very difficult. Um, spraying this on uh, actually takes a lot of the effort out of it. So if, if it's a small area, um, maybe around a fireplace or a feature wall that they're doing with the stone, um, a couple of cans of that to seal it would be absolutely fine. There. We now have some matte stain 820, which is our water-based. Matte stone. <laughs> One thing to remember with the matte stone H20 is always give the bottle a really good shape before you start because the ingredients need to be obviously re blended before you apply it. So when you're applying it, you can see it's actually of a milky consistency. Um, it's very, very easy to spread, like the sulfur paste one. <laughs> And you spread it out nice and evenly, like so, working it into the surface. And obviously, when you see it like that, the, the two look very similar. Uh, what you will find with the water base is it actually dries lighter than the solvent base. So, uh, if someone wants a lighter finish than matte stone solvent based, the matte stone H20 is the answer. We have what we call one of our traditional impregnators, which is the LTP stone oil. Um, now, when Mark demonstrates this, you'll see that unlike these matte stone colour intensifier, this is a slightly golden coloured liquid. It does the same job, it'll seal porous stone and terracotta, but it gives very strong enhancement because of its gold colour, especially with some limestone, some travertine. Again, you just pour a little bit on the surface um, and spread it out nice and evenly. So you know, when that's dry, we can see the difference between the two. Um, and this will also be a very useful sample for you to show clients as well. So if I were to get this water and just place it on this piece of granite, for instance, okay, we would put it on, like so. Um, sorry, you probably got a little bit off like that, but... And you can immediately see from that that the water is absorbing into the stone because it's gone darker. And what you would do is you would time how long it takes for that water to fully absorb. 
Uh, if the water absorbs within five minutes, it's what we call high porosity stone. And you're likely to need three to four coats of sealant to make it properly protected. If the water sits on the surface, I'm going to try and pull this if I can, it's a bit difficult to discuss, on the stone, and it sits there on the surface, and you can't see it absorbing for about five minutes. Okay, so anything between five and 20 minutes is what we call medium porosity. Okay, and that will require probably two to three coats of sealer. If the water is still sitting on the surface like this after about 40 minutes, it's what we call low porosity stone, and you'll only need one to two coats of sealer. But I'm going to move on to surface sealers, which again obviously was the third point. They're putting a barrier across the top of the tile. Most of them, or well, all the surface sealers, do dry very quickly. Um, Armax Gloss and Armax Satin are the same stable, they're the same family. One gives a very high gloss finish, the other gives a slightly more satiny eggshell finish, but they both work in exactly the same way. If someone is having travertine in their kitchen, or they're having any natural stain in their kitchen, it, it might be a good idea when you're talking to the client just to advise them of that. Um, and suggest that they might perhaps consider finishing it with the iron wax satin. Now, um, obviously the, the reason that most people buy a natural stone is because uh, they like the natural beauty of it. We've got these applicator pads and pad holders. What you've got here is a, is a pad that absorbs the solution and it holds on to the solution. And when you, when you brush this across the surface, it, it applies a nice, even layer. <coughs> this is another way of applying it. You can fold up the cloth uh, and just gently draw it, having applied it, just without rubbing, spread it across the surface of the stone. Simple as that. And then we just let it dry naturally. And again, it takes about 45 minutes to dry. We normally advise three coats. Then there is another surface sealer called Glaze Protector, which is designed to do the same job as the armwax satin, but it's designed to key onto very unporous surfaces. The difference you have with Glaze Protector is it will adhere to surfaces that have pretty much no absorbency at all. Uh, once it's cured, it's incredibly hard wearing. It's much harder than the satin, it's much harder than the glass. And that's an important aspect with all, with all sealers, is that they're not going to alter slip resistance either way. You can't really make a tile more slip resistant by using our sealer equally well. It's not going to make it more slippery. The final category for our surface sealers are the natural waxes. Now, we, we do two types of wax. We do a clear wax and an antique wax. So basically this is a paste wax and it's a very different way of finishing stone. It, it doesn't have the same sort of sheen or, or, or appearance that you would get from uh, a synthetic acrylic finish. Um, it's a very traditional way of finishing stone as well. It is used in, in conjunction with uh, machines. So you can apply this wax to the surface. You can all see there that it's a solid paste or a soft paste as a So you can see here it's a paste wax. I've got a little bit on the cloth there. I'm just going to apply a small amount to the surface of the stone. If I just hand that round, um, and just sort of just feel the surface. It's a nice, it's got a high glass finish, but you've got a, a nice appearance of that. The same products that we have talked about that can be used on stone occasionally also come as a kit, our stone care kit. And there are three products, there's the cleaner, the sealer, and the aftercare product that can be sold as a maintenance kit with granite worktops for basins, for sinks. In here, you have 
the three products. So if someone has bought a granite worktop, or they bought a, a stone fireplace, or they anything out of stone, and they're concerned about how they look after it thereafter. In here, you have some of the stone clean, which you saw me demonstrate on the stone here. That's the foam cleaner. You have some of the stone seal, which is used for topping up the protection. And then you've got a daily sort of aftercare product as well. So everything that the customer might need is in this kit. Very simple product. You don't only need a very small amount of plywood to the surface. You simply get a cloth and you give it a wipe all over, no need to rinse. And what that's doing is it's just lifting a bit of the dirt and grime that might have accumulated um, without damaging the seal, without damaging the stain. So it's the right cleaner to use if you have a granite worktop or a stone surface or a fireplace. And when we're talking about aftercare, which is point three in the three-step process. And it's, it's really important, it's, it's very simple, it's very obvious, but it's often forgotten. All the information we give, we say, this is what you seal the tile with. And it's on the back of each seal belt bottle as well, but we also say, and then after that, you need to wash the floor with either wax wash or floor shine. On the whole, we only have two aftercare products, so it's not a big choice for people. They would either wash their floor with wax wash or floor shine, and what that does is that cleans the floor and it protects and maintains the seal. So a floor that is cleaned with wax wash or floor shine will last twice as long as one that isn't, or even longer than that. So there are only two aftercare products. The first one is wax wash, um, and you'll get 40 washes from that one container. So it's very concentrated, isn't it? And that is absolutely perfect for conditioning stone surfaces that have been treated. So it's pH neutral, um, and it's also been tested independently for its uh, pH neutral nature. Um, if you're using this on a polished stone, what you might want to do afterwards is just go over it with a dry cloth just to bring that polish back. But each time you clean it on a polished surface, it will embellish it, it will make it look brighter and improve the appearance. If you were recommending unwax gloss or unwax satin or glaze protector, which are the water-based water-based water surface sealers, then you would be best recommending floor shine because floor shine contains a trace of that surface seal in it. When you use this cleaner, what happens, those polymers that have become disconnected are rebound back together again. And that's what maintains the sheen and the appearance of the floor. So it's, it's just as important as the ceiling itself. Yeah. Stonewash, again, follows the same <coughs> theory as we've done with any, any other product in the trigger spray. Stone wash is very similar to wax wash and it is used, obviously, if you've got tiles on a wall, it's going to be much easier just to spray and clean in a shower with stone wash yeah. than with wax wash. No, there is a very slight difference with yeah. stone wash in, in as much as uh, the actual formula itself um, contains um, enzymes that are sort of biologically break down things like body fats and grease and soaps and shampoos uh, without damaging or having any detriment uh, effect on the sea level with stone. And you've all seen me using these. These are uh, great for scrubbing and cleaning. Um, you've got these in stock, haven't you, Sergio? And we've got uh, obviously the pad holders. We've got the sealant application pad. And the advantage of this is it saves up the sealer and obviously allows you to apply it evenly. There is a pole that attaches to this as well. It's in four pieces. So if, if a trader is buying it, it's great to store it away in the van. Um, then we've got the same sort of emulsifying pads, but in a larger form, which also fit on the bottom of the pad holder. So the pad holder has lots of uses. All of the products are available to, to look at in the catalogue. 
because uh, quite often people, you, you'll describe how they need to apply it over the phone. And then the next question is, um, where can I get that from? Where can I buy that from? So the, the answer is, well, we can sell it. To you. With all products, there will be separate technical data sheets, which basically explain exactly how the product works, but much easier to read. So product guides are more project specific. So if you've sold someone Slate, you can actually send them a guide which tells them with words and pictures what they have to do, in what order, and what products to use. If you're asked a question and you're not quite sure, pick up the phone, we'll give you the answer straight away.